What's up, everyone? It's your boy, Norn Rad 89 here, bringing you another Rad Movie Review, and you know what time it is. Dune Part 2 is out. It is officially here, and it's time to talk the long-awaited sequel to Denis Villeneuve's Passion Project, because this is his was a big project for him. He is a really big fan of Dune, and like I said, he put a lot of love into this, so does Dune Part 2 live up to the first one? Is it better than the first one? You're going to find out today, so let's get down to this. Roll it. <laughs> Yes, today we are going to talk Dune Part 2, and I did, in fact, was at the Regal Cinemas. That's where we went to go see the movie, and we picked up the cup, this limited edition cup that comes with it. I like the cup. This is really cool. But the bucket is kind of plain. It's cool, but it's kind of like just plain Jane. But the cup is, like, really nice. I like the top and everything. It's got the house symbol and stuff, and then here's the bucket right here. And it's also got the houses on the sides as well, like Harkonnen and Atreides and all that stuff, so... Yeah, splurged and got the bucket and, of course, the cup. And now we're here to discuss the film. That's the most important thing. That's why you came here. Does it live up to the book, to the original one, like said, David Lynch's version, or just doing part one in general? How do I feel about it? So let's get right into the positives right away. Is that my favorite thing about Dune part two is easily the music. The atmosphere and the music is just off the charts. Hans Zimmer knocks it out of the park again with a fantastic score. I think the score and the music for this one is actually better than Dune Part 1, so this is just really right up my alley, Dune Part 2, in terms of the atmosphere. The world building as well is really off the charts. Denis Venu really brought it home in terms of adding new layers and new elements. Even if it's just a small moment, a small scene, there is a lot of world building within this movie. Some other fantastic positives is I think that the cast pretty much almost across the board is really out of this world. Rebecca Ferguson, Timothy Chalamet, even Zendaya, which I don't fancy her at all really in terms of all the other stuff that she's part of in terms of projects. I don't really like her in Spider-Man or Euphoria or anything like that. Dune is pretty much the only thing I really like her in. So in terms of acting, the lead cast, even Josh Brolin's character, um, Javier Bardem, another fantastic standout character. So a lot of the acting really off the charts and you can feel the characters and feel the weight of the passion and the moments and everything that goes into the movie. Next up, we have the cinematography and of course, the just the look of the film. Like it looks really great and there's so many poster worthy shots and it's really gorgeous just to look at in terms of the colorization like I said the color palette the cinematography all off the charts so Den Denis Villeneuve you can tell he really does care about this story he cares about these movies that this is an important story to him and this was a really big passion project for him because you can tell he put a lot of care and a lot of effort into these films and I'm, I'm glad that they waited for this one I know this one was slated to come out last year and we really only had to wait because of the writer and director strike and all that kind of stuff or writers and actor strike but I really am happy with how this one turned out and I didn't mind waiting so I think Dune Part 2 is really a slam dunk entry and a really fascinating one and for me it's better than Part 1 it is for me more enjoyable more entertaining the the moments that have the emotional moments they hit hard and like I said the music the acting really all off the chart I really like also the pace of this movie this was a movie that I could have even done with probably 20 minutes more and I would have been down to sit there the three hours they really flew by it felt like nothing so this was kind of like uh like the Batman like when we went to go when I went to go see the Batman in theaters it was kind of like that. The three hours just flew by because you were so enthralled and so entertained that it kept me on the edge of my seat pretty much the majority of the film. Another standout in the film was Austin Butler as our new antagonist character. I think he did a fantastic job and stuff, but let's get some, this kind of leads into some mixed and negatives. So let's get into that really is that I think some of the actors in this film were a little bit underutilized, not Austin Butler in particular. I'm talking like Florence Pugh, I think for for example, is one. Leah Sado is another one for sure. I think those are two really great actresses that they put into this movie. 
and their parts are just kind of very surface level. They're just kind of there to push the story forward and get you to the next point, kind of like a logic moment drop thing. It's not really a character you get invested in or anything like that. But I had a fantastic time with this film. Like I said, overall, it's a total blast. This is definitely a cinema experience in terms of like the film, like the scope of it. It's definitely bigger than the first film. The acting, like everything, what they brought to the story. And I like the fact that they leave it hanging like if Denis Villeneuve wants to and wants to commit to another one of Dune Part 3, it is totally possible that we have more room to go with this story and I would be down to see uh, another more chapters with these characters because like I said, I'm invested. By the time we got to the third act, I was heavily invested with a lot of these characters and like I said, I think the world building off the charts, like I said, I think just in terms of my only real negative is that, like, it's a good negative. I wanted more time. I could have been there 20 more minutes, and I think we could have flushed out some more story stuff, and that some of the actors in particular, just certain people, were underutilized in terms of their talent and the roles that they cast them in for the movie. So now we're here to nail down the rating for Dune Part 2, and in my book, Dune Part 2 is going to get a 9.5 out of 10. Like I said, it's a very, very solid rating, really close to being like that perfect film. Another reason why it probably wouldn't get that 10 out of 10 is that this is really a film that you have to see Dune Part 1 to enjoy. You can't. It's kind of hard. You can't really just dive into Dune Part 2 and just be like, yeah, this is freaking amazing. You kind of have to watch Dune Part 1 to really get the full effect of Dune Part 2, so that's kind of another kind of hindrance to the movie, so a 9.5 out of 10, but that is still a very strong, very high rating, and like I said, one, a film that I highly recommend you go out and check out in theaters, especially if you get a chance to maybe go out and see the IMAX one. This is probably a movie that you might want to go see in IMAX because, like I said, it has the scope of it, the cinematography, all that kind of stuff. It's very large scale, and I think this is a fantastic movie. But thanks for sticking around with me all for this rad movie review. Please like the video. That definitely helps out the channel. Subscribe if you're new to the channel, and poke that notification bell so you're notified anytime I drop a video. But most importantly, you know, know what's up. Have a safe and happy day. Peace out.